Okay, Sleep Month. Okay. I am chatting with Sandra Wilson. Sandra, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you do? Yes, so I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and I specialise in helping women around midlife, perimenopause age with chronic anxiety and all of its little spin-offs such as insomnia. Uh, yes. So, yeah, I mean, just before we started recording, you were telling me about your experience of sleeplessness in early perimenopause. I think if we start there, that's as good a starting point as any, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, as I was saying, I basically went from a sleepless menopausal wreck whose life felt it was totally over to sleeping like a baby most nights without any pills or potions. And I have tried most of them if not all of them and I haven't really used any sleep medication really I mean occasionally I might do if I'm going camping or something but very very rarely. So what was what was happening when you weren't sleeping and what changed? Well <laughs> I think the main problem that I had personally was that I wasn't really in the headspace to accept what was happening to me. I didn't understand what was happening to me. I just kind of went from sleeping quite normally, quite happily, to just having a lot of disruption in my sleep. So of course, because I didn't understand it, I started to worry about it. So the next thing I know, I've just developed this full-blown case of sleep anxiety. And just to be really clear, it's the kind of anxiety that you feel about not sleeping and it can really build up like a snowball. I mean, I still do believe that even though insomnia can be complex, most cases probably are more manageable and even, you know, it's even possible to overcome most cases if you can try not to worry about not sleeping. And that I think... I think that's so true. And I think anybody who's gone through a bout of not sleeping, and I'm not talking full blown insomnia here where we're getting into, you know, um, sort of sleep studies and things like that with, with, you know, full on doctors and stuff, but it becomes self-perpetuating yeah. because you go to bed thinking, oh, I'm not going to sleep again tonight, am I? Or I must sleep tonight. I must yeah. sleep. And funnily enough, nah. Ta-da. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, obviously sleep is important. Um, there are a lot of vested interests, I think, um, on the part of, you know, big pharmaceutical companies who try to convince us that we must get eight hours a night or else. And I think the problem I had, I'd become ill, I should be getting this sleep, I felt entitled to be getting this sleep and desperately frustrated because it just wasn't happening so what happened was Emily I tried hard to sleep I tried everything but the more I tried the further sleep evaded me and I think this is where the paradox lies the more you try to sleep the less likely you are to drift off and it's a little bit like you know sleep is like a wild animal it hates being stalked yeah it does and and I'm, go I'm just going to quickly run with that but actually having having I'm off on a tangent I apologize we'll be back in a sec but I, I did some um, animal communication stuff many years ago and one of the really key things with that is that you get completely calm completely yeah. present you don't have mm -hmm. any racing mind or anything and so your wild animal analogy absolutely sits with that yeah yeah it is so true and you know in my practice I actually teach my clients that come to see me for insomnia sleep issues to follow a process that will eventually help them to drift off and it all starts with doing the complete opposite of what you normally do okay and it sounds totally counterintuitive but really you just got to stop trying to go to sleep <laughs> yeah you know it I does mean, feel counterintuitive but yeah but absolutely uh, you know yeah. 
it, it's it's you know if that thing's not happening that not that's not working yeah. you've got to try something different haven't you yeah i think the thing is the brain is just peppered with weird paradoxes so i mean insomnia is a paradox so the more you chase it the more you try to achieve it the less the further away it gets you know i mean i tend to draw my clients a bit of a weird diagram that's quite complicated and i couldn't remember it now but is the, the further you run toward a certain point, the mirror Im image of that um, reflection is simply running away. So the more you chase it, the further away it gets. You yeah. know, that, that's how, you know, that's the paradoxical um, sort of big feature of insomnia. And I think, you no, know, really, you know, it's, it's quite helpful if you can maybe focus on perhaps, you know, focus getting yourself lovely and peaceful so a nice peaceful wind down routine finding distractions all the standard advice really but the most important thing really of all is to stop worrying about not sleeping even though that sounds really really difficult that honestly is the key to stopping that big snowball building up so do you have any hints and tips for people to break that worry cycle yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, I, I like to use a little metaphor um, based on like a layer cake. Um, it's not something I made up, by the way. I remember reading it somewhere, but apologies to whoever did make it up. I can't remember who it was. But basically, sleep anxiety makes a single layer cake into a multi-layer sponge. And if you take away the unnecessary layers of anxiety as it builds up and up and up, you might actually find that the base level, the basic level insomnia might just go away by itself if you stop really hyper focusing on it. So, but yeah, going back to a few little tips. So most of us committed insomniacs have built up quite an unhelpful dialogue around not sleeping. So you might start to say things like, I'm gonna have a really crap day unless I get eight hours sleep, or I've got to look after my kids or, or do a presentation at work, or there's something seriously wrong with my brain. So you're, you, know, you could find that you're starting to develop and hang on to unhelpful beliefs about sleep. But yes, there is something wrong with your brain. You have overstimulated it, okay? and it's on hypervigilant fight or flight mode. And do you think you're gonna sleep when you're hypervigilant on fight or flight? No. And, and to be honest, you only have to look at, to, to talk, you know, to look at the sort of overstimulated, overvigilant thing, you only have to look at a toddler that you know is exhausted and they go the opposite extreme, don't they? Exactly, exactly. As we're all, you know, as hard as it sounds, um, I'm going to give you just a few, a little outline of the process that I use. So it's relax, accept, embrace and adapt. So relax before bed in whatever way, shape or form that feels right for you, whether that's reading or having a bath or just meditating or whatever works. So I'm never prescriptive about telling people how to relax and then accept. So if you're not asleep within 20 minutes, just accept the fact that you're not asleep, okay? And then embrace it. And that could mean just lying there thinking this is lovely and cozy. I know I'm not asleep, but I'm quite happy being awake because I know I'm resting. Or you might want to get up and polish all your teaspoons, which is what I actually did once. And then adapt. So that simply means, okay, I'm not asleep, but I'm nice and relaxed. I'm embracing it or being distracted. And tomorrow I am just going to adapt, whether that means asking my boss if I can finish a little bit early, you know, have a lovely treat, go for a little walk and just adapt the day to fit, you know, how you're feeling without you know making all these anxious predictions about how crap it's going to be because you didn't get your eight hours okay so the biggest lesson is you will be absolutely fine if you can just stop worrying about not sleeping excellent and what was d from the we went what was i oh, know that was <laughs> so relax embrace yeah. 
accept yep. and adapt. Sorry, I thought there was a D at the end. That's my bad. I missed, I missed you at the start. <laughs> Sorry, it's relax, accept, embrace, embrace and adapt. adapt. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and that's all. Once you start getting your, your focus onto doing those things, Yeah. your focus can't also be on panicking about not sleeping, can it? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, this is a process that I developed myself through years of experience years of frustration with my brain, with doctors, you know, telling me there was nothing wrong with me. And of course, I think the initial trigger for me was hormonal. Yeah. And I think if I'd had a doctor that had known something about HRT, I might have just got given HRT, you know, and that might have ironed it out. Yeah. You know, but what I had was massive overblown sleep anxiety. I had hypnotherapy that was very very helpful it did lead to me deciding to train to be a hypnotherapist but then on the back of the hypnotherapy I kind of developed some little tools and techniques around this relax accept embrace adapt model awesome that's brilliant yeah. thank you so much Sandra you're very welcome